Hi everyone, this is Chauke speaking and today we'll be going through building and structural construction N6 and we'll be looking at the topic eccentrically loaded beam connections, right? And we'll be using this book by Bischoff and Kutsi. Alright, so I extracted a question from your book which is found in page 87, alright? So the question is like, Calculate what size of the bolts will be suitable for the connection as shown in the figure below. The maximum shear stress in the bolts may not exceed 100 MPa. Alright, so what do we have here? We've got a beam, alright, connected to a column by means of four bolts. And it's eccentrically loaded by what? 30 kN force. And the distance is what? It's 250, alright? And the distance between the bolts vertically is 200 and horizontally is 150. And for this video or this lesson, we will be concentrating on eccentric load which is applied in the plane. Alright. And part two of the video will look at the load which is applied out of the plane. Alright. So what are we looking for? Again, we are looking for the size. We want to design a si the size of a bolt which will be able to carry this load all right so the question is what is eccentric load eccentric load is a load that is acting away from the center of gravity of that member all right so if we look at uh, these four bolts here the center of gravity of these four bolts is somewhere here all right so this force is acting away from the center of gravity or this existed so because of that it is called eccentric load on the contrary, if the force was acting through the center of gravity, that force will be called axial force. Axis, axial. Alright? So then now, we are going to step number one. Step number one, we are looking at the vertical load. Alright? Remember, there are two things that will be happening to the bolts. Alright? The bolts are in shear and also in tension. In tension, is that which uh, wants to pull the bolts out of its place. Let's go back to the question. All right. And shearing is, one, is what wants to snap the bolts through its diameter. All right. So two things will be happening there. So step number one, we are determining the vertical load. All right. Denoted by this um, FS here which is equals to eccentric load over number of bolts. Okay, so there we go, P over N. Our eccentric load, you remember, is 30, and the number of bolts, we have 4. And then, that gives us 7,5 kilonewtons. Alright, so that's our vertical load there. And then, step number 2, we are going to calculate the distance from centroid to the furthest bolt all right so here are our bolts here one two three four so here's the center of gravity ct all right so we want the distance from the center of gravity to the bolt all right so that's our r all right that's our r here. if you 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 you'll realize this distance is the same as from here to there from here to there from here to there. Alright. So now we have something like this. A triangle. We have got X and Y. Alright. So now because of that, we can use Pythagoras theorem. R is equals to square root of X squared plus Y squared. So you remember what is your X? The distance from here to here was 150. Alright. And then half of it is 75. And y from here to there is what? 200. And half of 200 is 100. So that's where we get that. And when we calculate, we get 125. Okay, so our distance from here to there is 125. Then now, step number three, we are going to determine the direct load on bolts due to impose load. Alright, due to moments there. Alright. So now the FM, 
all right, is equals to P multiplied by E multiplied by R multiplied by the sum of R squared. Already we do have P, eccentric load, eccentric distance, and R, which we have, that, which we have just calculated. All right, so let us determine this squared. All right, so we know that R squared now is a resultant from what? X squared plus Y squared. Pythagoras theorem. All right. So we are going to sum all the x's. We are going to also sum all the y's. All right. So if you come here, we have got 4. Remember, your x is 75, right? Your y is 100. But where is this 4 coming from? And also here. Right. Let us go back to the diagram. x is from here to here, which is half of, which is half distance. All right. And this triangle is for this bolt. We also have another triangle for, for, for this bolt here. Also have another triangle for that one there. Also have another triangle for that one. So meaning that we have got X1 for this bolt, 2 for that bolt, 3 for that bolt, 4 for that bolt. The same applies with the Y. So we also have 4 Ys. So that's where this 4 comes from. Alright. So now we square, oh sorry. We, 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 yes, we square the 75 and 100, and then that's where we get this now. Alternatively, as I mentioned that, we also have one, how many R's? Four. This one for that bolt, one, two, three, four. And we've already calculated R, which is 125, right? We can simply say R, 4R squared, which is equals to 4, R is 125 square. We are going to get the same value as that one. Okay. Now we have all that we need to, 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 to calculate Fn. So then now we just substitute P is 30, E 250. Remember that R is 125. And then this now is 22,500. All right. And that gives us 15 kilonewtons and then we proceed to step number four step number four we want to determine the total load on each bolt all right so here's the formula very quickly and then f s squared f m squared will remember these two we've just calculated and then we also have this one let us talk a little bit with this one cos theta cos theta is x over r all right what is cos theta Cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. All right, x over r. So that is cos theta there. All right, and we know x is what? It's 75, r is 125. Students normally make a mistake and take this one here, where they say cos 75 into 75 over 125, which is wrong. Remember, cos theta is equals to x over r, which is 75 over 125. So you take the whole thing and replace uh, and substitute um, it uh, where you have got cos theta there. All right. Alternatively, if you want to use an angle, you just calculate an angle by saying inverse cos of what? Of 75 over 125. And then that angle... You can use it and then you can come and substitute here where there is theta. All right. So it will be cos theta. For example, if the angle is 30, you just say cos theta. All right. So please take note of that. And then if you substitute what you, 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 you have here, what's necessary, you'll get 20,4 kilonewtons. All right. So now step number five, we are going to determine the size of the bolt. All right. So, firstly, this area or the, 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 the stress is equal to area of force over area. All right. So, force is equal to shear stress multiplied by area of the bolt. All right. So, area now is equal to what? You are making area of the subject of the formula. All right. It's equal to force over stress. So, we have converted our force 20,4 Newton, uh, kilonewtons into newtons by multiplying it by what? 1,000. And then we get 20,400. 
over 100 MPa. This one we are given right from the equation. All right, and then we'll get what 204 millimeter squared. So this is our area here. So now from there we can calculate the diameter of a bolt. This is the diameter of a bolt or a circuit. All right, because our bolt is circular, which is what pi pi d squared over four. So we make d the subject of formula. When you multiply the formula, you get this one here, square root into four um, area over pi. Then you do have the area there. You just substitute, and then you get sixteen comma one two millimeters. All right. So you cannot have you do not have this size commercial sixteen comma one two. So you you round you go to the next higher size. You cannot use sixteen. Because the size of the ball that will be able to withstand is 16,1 to nothing less than this. Alright, so you rather have a bigger diameter. Alright, so here they use 20. However, even if you used 18, because we do have um, 18 millimeter uh, size of a ball uh, commercially available. Alright, so but they used uh, 20 millimeters which is also fine so the size of the bolt which will be able so each bolt or uh, four of the bolts will be what 20 millimeters so 20 millimeter size of the bolt is the one that will be able to carry what that connection or to carry that load all right i hope you enjoyed the lesson see you next time